Good afternoon. Um, it's nice to be here. So I'm just going to give some diet bits of data because um, we're going to have some big debate um, right after my presentation. So um, first of all, I'm going to skip some of the slides. So here, um, I'm going to share to you some RevPAR landscape for Southeast Asia. Um, we're going to look at some growth markets from 2008, um, key cities performance, and then some demand in ADR during major holidays, specifically the Chinese New Year. Um, we're going to look at the performance of some sunny destinations in Asia, of course, and of course, some drivers for growth. All right. So generally, in, in a general outlook, we have seen that demand growth is really picking up, and then some supply growth is slowing down in, um, in Asia Pacific. But the rev par is up. The rev par for Asia Pacific is up by 5.3% for this quarter and 6.2 for Southeast Asia. Now, um, this is just a quick perspective of um, some of the growth markets um, from 2008. So we got four markets here in Southeast Asia that has achieved good growth, but this um, is based from 2008's perspective and at the year end of 2017. Now, Beijing is on the other side of the polarity with negative 21% in growth. However, just take note that in 2008, there was the Beijing Olympics. So, of course, during the time, there was a big um, demand for the market. So, that's why we're seeing that huge slump in terms of uh, performance from 2008 and compare that with the year end of 2017. Now, um, just for the you know, last 12 months perspective for some key markets in Southeast Asia. Vietnam continues to grow. Um, we have known that Vietnam is still, you know, that stellar performance with almost 10% growth. But Philippines on the other side now is slightly down in terms of um, demand. Um, supply is growing. Um, Philippines is on a build, build, build mode. And um, there's um, a lot of supplies are coming up into the market. Just a little bit of bits for the Indochina, of course, based on our sample, it's still very, very limited. But just for Cambodia, I just wanted to share to you that Cambodia is up by 24 points in terms of demand. So that's something um, key that we have seen uh, for the last 12 months if we looked at from March um, data. All right. In terms of perspective, of course, we want to give you some visualization of where the growth markets are. Malaysia and Vietnam are the ones that are continuously growing for the last 12 months. 10% increases in RevPAR. What we have seen is that the demand for these two markets, in fact, has outpaced the supply levels by over 5%. Uh, percent. So that's uh, really good news, especially for the Malaysian market, which has some um, experience um, slumped, especially in 2015. Right. So this is um, a general trend for Thailand. Would anyone tell me uh, um, what was the occupancy level of, for example, for Bangkok on the, um, last Monday? Would anyone know? Have anyone have an idea? Char Charlie, do you have any idea? Close. We are 73.5%. So within the range of, um, for Bangkok, for example, it is within the range of 70 to 75 percent, and Thailand continues to grow. So, in fact, uh, for the first quarter of the year, we have seen that rev bar is up by 10 percent. All right. Okay. Now, you would argue, um, you know, sometimes feel will, uh, films will do have, you know, um, a push in terms of demand. And earlier, um, you know, hot topics like China being uh, being Chinese as being um, top source market for. For, uh, most, uh, for most cities. So what we have seen is during the Chinese New Year alone, we try to compare the occupancies and how much they have um, increased the rev bar. So for Bangkok, in um, Chinese New Year, for this year, the occupancy level was up at 92%. And in Phuket, it was 97%. So really good performance there during the um, Chinese New Year occasion. Right. Malaysia, I've, I was in Malaysia a few days ago, and it's, um, of course, after the election, there were still some jitters, you know, what's going to happen in the, uh, in the market. But at least when we looked at the longer perspective, we just wanted to see, you know, how much the demand is growing. Um, 2015, of course, that was down, um, almost 3% down in terms of demand, but it started to go up from 7.1%, and by the year end of 2017, it is up by 
eight points. So that is really good, and uh, we have seen that rates are also growing. All right. Kuala Lumpur being the heart of the city, it's still, we have seen some positive growth um, in terms of occupancy. When we look at the three years performance for Kuala Lumpur, the occupancy is from 65 and now jumped up to 70%. And if we look at the um, day of week analysis, what we have seen is that for the past three years, the occupancy level on a Saturday is up by 73%. You would argue that yes, it is because of the regional travels, but there's also a big chunk of domestic tourism that is happening in the market. All right, Singapore. Um, it's been um, doldrum, doldrums in terms of RevPAR performance, 35 months there of some slump in terms of RevPAR. But we're very, very positive when we looked at our forecast report. Of course, we tie up with tourism economics. And what we have seen is that we're quite positive, you know, there's going to be um, RevPAR growth around 1% to 4%. All right, Vietnam being the stellar performance for since 2015, year on year, tourism arrivals increases. But what is important to know is that, for example, from the north part, Hanoi, um, it is already taking shape, the, the modern Silk Road, because a lot of that door from the north part um, after Lao Cai, that part is already opening up for the Chinese tourists. And that's um, a corridor for more tourism and more businesses to come in coming from China. Right, some sunny destinations for Asia. Um, there are three markets that we have seen some growth for the first quarter, Phuket, Da Nang, and also Pattaya. Now, interestingly, so these are your sunny destinations, but recently the Boracay market from the Philippines has, you know, has closed its doors. So they're going to be closed for six months. Now, with the displaced tourism, you know, which destination is set to, to win? So hopefully any of this market is going to attract those dis displaced tourists coming from the supposed to go to Boracay market. All right, there are four drivers of growth that, um, of course, we looked into our data and there's four drivers of growth that we can show you. One of the, um, the driver is for a market to be able to come back into form. So we have here Bali, Seoul, and Bangkok. Of course, Bangkok, it's very, very quick recovery. Seoul is still recovering, and then there was the Chinese um, tourism ban, so they're still recovering from that. And Bali, quite a longer recovery, and of course, Mount Agung has erupted, so thereby shaking the market a little bit. But what we have seen is that February, they have started to come back again in terms of demand. Right. Um, another um, driver for growth for, for Southeast Asia, so what we have seen, is the ability for the market to increase or increase their ADR during high occupancy levels above 90%. So Phuket here um, is one of those key markets whereby they have achieved 64 nights in a year and they have increased their premium by 102%. So that's really good performance, and it shows that Phuket is confident in increasing the rate, especially on high demand dates. Right. Another um, driver for growth is the ability of the destination to host events. So for example, for Kuala Lumpur, they hosted the Southeast Asian Games last year. And what we have seen is during that time, it was um, they pulled it off and occupancy is up by 80%. They have also increased the ADR levels by 3.8%. Um, and of course, there's also continuously demand again from regional travels, as I mentioned earlier, and also domestic tourism. Right. F&B, this was a really hot topic earlier, F&B destination, culinary destination, and um, earlier like minor um, t um, acquiring Benihana, which is really nice, I've tried it. Um, but it's, um, there's this recognition of F&B revenue growth. So this is just in perspective of revenue growth that we have seen into the market. Jakarta is up by 32%. So the, the thing is, if um, with f &B, it's still a good contributor to the total revenue of the hotel. So this is just in perspective of the growth of f &B and its potentials to, to add in to the, to the total revenue of the hotel. Right, so we have a, um, speaking of changes, we have this AMPM where we scope hotel data, um, the supply and also the demand. So just to share to you a little bit of um, some pipeline, you know, some trends. 
Australia, Vietnam, and Japan are the ones who are majorly increasing in terms of paces. So, you know, in Vietnam alone, we are expecting over about 27,000 hotel rooms to be added into the markets. And that's here, especially in Southeast Asia. And of course, hopefully that will also be fueled by the increase of demand that, um, you know, they are expecting, especially with the opening of the backdoor corridor from China. All right. So just some key takeaways before the big debate. So Vietnam still is in a stellar demand. Um, for Singapore, we might be expecting some positive outlook. Thailand still shows confidence in yielding during high demand dates. Um, something to, um, to bring home maybe is displacement of the Boracay tra travelers if they, will, if they are likely to go to other sunny destinations in Asia. And of course, um, the pipeline growth again in Vietnam is recorded as one of those serious growth uh, for the last 12 months. Thank you.